everyone, my name is Rose and today my topic um, presentation is going to be over the coffee industry. So just a quick fact that the coffee industry is the second most leading industry. Um, it's just right after the oil industry. So when we're talking about coffee, we need to know who it came from, who discovered it, where it came from, and when it was discovered. So the answer to those three questions is nobody knows. As of today, it is still a mystery. But there is an um, Ethiopian legend out there that pretty much goes that uh, a guy named Kaudi, he was a goat uh, herder, and one day he was out with his goat, and he found these berries. These berries um, are what we know today as coffee beans. So he picked them, and then he gave it to his goat. And at nighttime, he noticed that his goat has so much energy that they didn't go to sleep at all. They weren't tired, and they were just out doing goat things. So he noticed that for a couple of days, and then he went to his local monastery, and he told the head monks. So the head monk there was like, okay, so give me those berries, and I'll try it out myself and see. So the head monk, you know, he, he got those berries, and he tried it out one evening. So during the evening that he took it, he would have to do a, more, a evening prayer. And while doing that, he noticed that he had a lot of energy. He didn't feel sleepy. He didn't have the urge to go to sleep or anything like that. And so he told his other monks about it, and his other monks tried it. And it was the same thing. They didn't feel sleepy. They had all this energy to do these things. And then it started being kind of like populated, or popular. Um, so then during that time, it spread it over to the Arabian Pinsuela. And then you notice on the map here, the Arabian uh, Pinsuela is in the Saudi Arabia area. So that's, in that area was where coffee um, started to cultivate and the trading for it begins. Um, during the 15th century, it was grown mostly in Yemen. And then during the 16th century, it started to grow in Persia, Egypt, Sy um, Sy Syria, and Turkey. Um, during that time, there was a popular place called Coffee House. And the Coffee House eventually became known as School of the Wise because it's a place that not only did they drink coffee and then meet people and have conversation but it's also a place where they listen to music they watch performers they play chess and they kept current on news and um it slowly started to spread to other country because um pilgrimers um like the tourists and the europeans and stuff they came over and they um, heard about this discovery and they learned about it and such like that they went back to their country and then they start spreading to other people and then it just started spreading all over the world now this map right here is called the bean belt. So these countries in the um, that's shaded in like a brownish color, those countries are where coffee is mostly produced um, because they have the climate, the tropical climate that's needed in order to grow coffee. Um, the countries that you see that's listed up here, like the eight countries, um, those are the popular countries that you mostly see on like those uh, on the um, bean like the coffee bean bags that you buy at the stores or somewhere so like let's say you go into um starbucks and you buy like uh those bean those coffee bags that they sell and they say you know this is from sumatra and it will let you know sumatra their coffee is more kind of like a fruity smell flavor type of coffee and then if it's at columbia their coffee is more kind of like a nuttier so it depending on what type of coffee drinker you are you'll know which one you prefer. Um, this um, chart right here for the top export countries. These countries are the leading, as of December 2015, these countries are the, are the leading export countries. Um, so the top two is Brazil and Vietnam um, for 2015. So Brazil mostly export out Arabica co um, coffee beans and then Vietnam mostly do Robusta coffee beans. So you might be wondering, what is the difference between the two? They're both coffee beans. They probably look the same, taste the same, all that stuff, which is not true. The Arabica coffee, um, the shape itself is more oval and has like, kind of like a, a deeper, richer brown color versus the Robusta. Uh, the Robusta is more dull looking. Um, and also the Robusta is cheaper to buy. It's roughly about 40 to 50% cheaper to buy than Arabica. And also to grow them, the Robusta are able to grow on like flat plantations. Um, they can also grow at lower altitude versus the Arabica requires a higher altitude 
um, mostly up in the mountains at like roughly 600 meters above. Um, so they are harder to cultivate and harvest. So um, they require harder, uh, more intensive labor work versus robusta. Robusta requires less intensive labor. And also when you look at the caffeine level, the Arabica has like 1.5 caffeine and then Robusta has about 2.7 caffeine levels. So Robusta does have more caffeine in there. Um, so that could be a good thing or bad thing depending on you. And then finally, when we talk about like consumption, consumption um, if we talk about coffee consumption per day per person, then the leading country is Finland. They have about 5.7 cup per day per person. Sorry, whereas the U.S. has roughly about 1.9 per person per day. But when we talk about coffee consumption, like overall, just like the whole country itself, then the U.S. will be leading, will be the leading one because we consume at least um, roughly 300 million cup, three to 400 million cup per day. So, yeah, we drink a lot of co coffee. Yeah. Um. So, any questions? This is my reference.